just a big welcome. Obviously, this is a bit uh, strange for me. This is my first webinar, so um, hopefully this all goes to plan. Uh, Wi-Fi dependent, of course. Um, yeah, and, and this is a chance for us as a group um, to combine, given that we have to deliver virtually a chance that um, you know, we can combine user groups across uh, Wellington, Christchurch, and Auckland. So um, us three uh, on the screen, if you can see us all, have, um, have, have just come together and, and um, yeah, brought some speakers together from both New Zealand and overseas. And, and um, yeah, really just a chance that um, you know, everyone can join in together and, and go all going well. You know, maybe this is an initiative that we, uh, that we do a bit more uh, even when things return to normal. So um, assuming everyone can see my screen, maybe Alex, can you confirm? Yeah, yes. cool, yes. all good, nice. Um, so just before we start, uh, I know people attempted to um, screenshot, photo, write notes, that sort of thing. Um, we'll be summarizing any key sort of points that we make throughout uh, the session, as well as any links that we refer to, just so that you've got a uh, a chance to actually follow those. So don't feel pressured uh, to um, write everything down or, or take screenshots. It just gives you a chance to sit back and listen to uh, the speakers that we've got today. Uh, as you have questions throughout the session, uh, there's a, a Q&A function. So please use that and submit your questions uh, through there. And then um, depending on time between speakers, we may answer, ask and answer some questions between speakers. Uh, or if we're running a bit tighter for time, um, we may just leave some of the questions till the very end and the questions that we don't get to will uh, we'll take offline and we'll uh, look at answering after the session. Um, so just quickly on the agenda for the day. Um, obviously we're doing the welcome now. Um, we're going to start with uh, Alex talking a bit about some of the online resources that help you uh, keep going with Tableau in lockdown, followed by Steve uh, who works for MTF in Dunedin talking a bit about one of the community initiatives uh, Makeover Monday. Um, Sarah from Singapore is a, a Singapore Tableau user group leader. She's going to be talking a, a bit more about the, uh, the hiring process, of, I guess, when you're looking at, for people with Tableau skills. Uh, and then we've got Heidi all the way from Germany. So I appreciate Heidi getting up at a ridiculous hour uh, to join us and, and a slightly more technical session and a, a bit more around uh, set versus parameter actions. And as I mentioned, hopefully we get to those, uh, that Q&A uh, towards the end, depending on time. Uh, for those who haven't uh, maybe joined a, a Tableau user group before, uh, the purpose, just to recap, is, is a way to connect uh, Tableau users throughout uh, New Zealand, in this case, uh, at all levels, a chance to learn from each other uh, in a relaxed environment and, um, and just stay across everything Tableau related. So uh, sometimes it's new features, that sort of thing. Other times it might be a bit more specific around a certain feature. Um, and hence the, the timing and the, the content of each user group varies depending on the topics we've got, the people that want to speak, that sort of thing. Um, just to quickly, I guess, let's, let's introduce the, the, the user the group leaders that we have throughout the country, and then we'll, uh, we'll jump into Alex. Go. Oh, um, so yeah. Yeah. Me, yeah. Cool, I'll start. <laughs> um, yeah, so introducing myself, my name is Tabata. Uh, you might know me as Data Rocks on Twitter. Um, I've been working with Tableau since 2016-ish, um, and yeah, I, I went solo and started my own uh, consultancy last year, so yeah, that's, I've been helping Alex since early this year with uh, organizing the Auckland Tableau user group, so it's, it's really nice to have Jeff coming along as well and uh, Christchurch and Wellington joining us and trying to do a whole country thing. And uh, I can see that there's people from everywhere. That's really exciting. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, have a good day today and let's enjoy it. Going now to Jeff. Thanks. And uh, yeah, so I'm Jeff. I um, lead the Christchurch Tableau user group. Uh, I've been doing that for a couple of years now. Um, and I'll let Christchurch answer whether or not they like that or not. Um, my colleague Paul, uh, oh, I suppose just a quick note on me. I worked at Tableau in the UK for a year. Uh, which was great fun. It gave me a really good understanding of the product and, and coming back to New Zealand. Um, yeah, really wanted to continue my work with Tableau. So I work with a, a Tableau partner, but I uh, use Tableau in my own time and, and for my own analysis. So I've probably got one of the uh, the best handles on my mortgage than uh, the average mortgage holder, I would have thought. But 
it's, a, it's probably my favorite view that I can't share with anyone. Uh, Paul from um, Wellington can't be here. He's, he's just apologized with a family emergency. So on behalf of Paul, he leads the, uh, the Wellington Tableau user group. Um, he's Nelson based, but he's in Wellington regularly. And so uh, when, when we run Wellington Tableau user groups, Paul would be leading that. And then I'll hand it to Alex for an introduction. Sweet, yeah, welcome everybody as well. Um, my name is Alex. I run the Auckland Tableau user group together with Tabata now. Um, I've been using Tableau for around five years. Um, used to work for Tableau Partner, did some solutions consulting and recently um, resigned to take some time off. So now I'm just using Tableau in my, in my spare time for recreational purposes really. Um, yeah, again, thanks everybody for joining. Um, I just had a look at the chat. Um, people from England, um, Heidi from Germany, people from India and Australia dialing in. That's, that's the great thing about those virtual events. Um, and with that, we are really already in, in the middle of our of my presentation, really. Um, let me share my screen and bring up the slides. So, um, so as Jeff said already, um, all the stuff I'm going to talk about, we'll send it out through an email afterwards, um, and I'll give you one summary link at the end. Um, I'll also put it in the chat once I talk about that, so you can you can look it up yourself. Um, so no need to I don't know type the type the links from the screen or, or take screen grabs or, or that sort of thing. Um, if you have any questions, just put them in the Q and A, and we get to it afterwards. Um, so obviously we run a virtual tag, um, and we are not the first ones to do that by all means. Um, so most tags around the world adopt. Of course, there is a dashboard for that. Um, so Yvette, who you from, um, from Hungary, she created a Tableau dashboard that lists all of these tags. Um, and if you hover over them or click on each of them, you can actually um, straight go to the registration page and register for, um, for the Zoom link or whatever platform they're using. Um, you can also see down, down here, um, that all the recordings can be found here. Um, and that's one thing that Tableau does. They record all the sessions and put them on their YouTube channel. Um, so you might see on your screen somewhere on the top left, I think a little red dot, which means that session here is also recorded um, and will be made available afterwards. So we'll send it through, um, through an email afterwards as well. Um, and that's a great way to, to sort of stay in touch and actually join events that you couldn't do otherwise. Um, one of the great opportunities that we have now is we have Steve from Dunedin talking um, and I think usually he's not really in a position to to join or even speak at a user group because the closest one will be Christchurch and that's still quite a drive away. Um, so it's easy enough to join the Australian user groups or sometimes even the, um, the American ones um, if it works with the time zone. Um, the second one that is sort of related is the Data Farm Community Gem, which is sort of a, a, a mouthful as a hash, hashtag. Um, if you attend the Auckland user groups, you probably will have heard me talk about the Tableau Fringe Festival, which is an online conference that is run by the community for the community. And as part of that, we decided, we thought about having sort of a regular online conference to, to bridge the gap. Um, and I think it was Mark Bradburn on Twitter who came up with, with that hashtag. So by now we had five weekly events um, over the last five weeks. Um, we, for each event, we have two hours of content, usually four speakers, and they all end up on YouTube as well. Um, so you already have 10 hours of content over the last five weeks, which you can rewatch and, and learn from. Um, again, I'll give you a link afterwards where you can sort of go through all the links and, and can, can register and you can see all the recordings that, um, that were made so, so far. Um, next up, there's one especially for Australia and New Zealand. Um, they do virtual test drives over the next three weeks every Tuesday. Um, so they test drive Tableau Desktop and Tableau Prep. So if, you, if you're new to Tableau or if you haven't used it at all, like guess you won't be here. Um, but if you have colleagues who are curious, uh, maybe send them to, to those virtual sessions. And even if you just um, started off using Tableau, um, I usually recommend them as, an, as a free free training guide. 
um, to learn the basics of Tableau and sort of um, get somebody from Tableau actually tell you and explain to you how, how you're supposed to use the tool. Um, the big thing I think that was announced, I think it was last week or the week before, is that the Tableau conferences, that is the Tableau Conference Europe and the big Tableau conference this year that was supposed to happen in Vegas will not happen um, at Vegas or in London. And they will all be virtual. Um, again, it's a bit it's a bit annoying for everybody who is looking forward to an international trip. Um, but I think the, the great opportunities again there for everybody will be free maybe, uh, well, the, the Tableau conference in Europe will be free definitely. Um, so you will be able to stream all the sessions and, and sort of make the most of it without actually going there. Um, for the Tableau conference in the US, they didn't announce any details yet. I would assume that it's either free or at a very low price. Um, and sort of they, they didn't really announce what they're gonna do um, during or how are they going to replace it? But they sort of hinted at, at big things that they were planning quite quite interesting concepts of how, how all those sessions would run. Um, so it won't only be just one Zoom session after the other where somebody's talking at you. Um, I would expect some more interactive sessions and some more interactive active activities as well. Um, and again, it's a great opportunity. Um, if you couldn't attend any of the conferences before, because it's quite expensive, especially from this part of the world to fly to the US and get accommodation and that sort of thing. Um, that's a great way to um, this year sort of join as much as possible. Um, TC Europe is happening end of June, beginning of July. Um, and the Tableau conference, I think it was scheduled for October. Um, so we'll see how Tableau handles that and how, um, how that will actually be run. So as soon as we have the information, you'll you'll definitely see it on LinkedIn or Twitter, and we'll also mention it in the next user groups. Um, and lastly, and sort of the main thing I wanted to talk about was the e-learning and, and certification. If you have been on social media, especially LinkedIn or Twitter in the last couple of weeks, um, you probably saw some of those hexagonal badges um, that people shared. Um, and the reason for that is that Tableau made it free for 90 days for everybody to join. Um, to do these badges and do the, the online training. Um, and how that works is they have different paths. So in this case, you see three, three main paths. It's the data culture, the developer, and the, the server one. <clears throat> um, they have online trainings, um, which are actually based on the desktop one, two, three, and the prep training. So usually, if you think about it, if you did a, a classroom training, it would be, I think it's for, uh, 1400 US dollar for a two-day training. Um, you, you don't get somebody actually walking you through the material, but the material online is actually exactly the same material that you would get in those trainings. Um, and then afterwards you can do those, um, well, little certification badges. Um, there are tests that I think they're usually around 25 to 30 questions. Um, there's no time limit and you can retake them. Um, and then you have something to put on your LinkedIn profile um, just to sort of confirm that you have the knowledge. Um, I did all of them a couple of weeks back. Um, the, the developer ones here are okay-ish. They're reasonably straightforward, especially if you work with Tableau regularly. Um, that said, there, there are a couple of questions where you have to read them quite, quite, um, quite accurately to, and think about it to make sure you tick the right answer. Um, the data culture and the server ones, they are a bit more specialized and a bit more um, sort of fringe knowledge that I wouldn't expect um, sort of the average Tableau developer to know. Um, so if you are into that or if you're keen to learn about that, that's a great opportunity to get started and get some basic knowledge about um, Tableau Server, for example, or how to, how to roll out an adoption program in the business. Um, but it's not, um, it's not something that you would need from day to day. So that's a great way. It's a, it's a ton of value. Um, usually I think you need to pay $120, so, um, 120 US dollar per year to get access to that. Um, and here it's, it's for free now until the end of June. So as long as you register until the end of June and enter the, um, the voucher code 2020 e-learning, um, you'll get 90 days from that day onwards to do all your exams, to do all your training sessions. And additionally, um, currently they give 50% off the Tableau Desktop Specialist Certification. 
Um, so that's the entry-level certification that usually sells for 100 US dollar. Um, it doesn't expire. So currently you get it for $50 and um, get sort of a, a basic entry-level certification for Tableau, which is, again, sort of a good way to, um, to show your knowledge and to, to sort of prove um, that you have the knowledge and that you know how to use the tool. Um, where do you get the info? Um, as I said, we will send a summary around. Um, I also wrote a little blog post with all the links that I just talked about. Um, I'll put the link in the chat after I'm done talking here, um, so you don't have to frenetically type it now. Um, so just wait for another minute. But everything I talked about and a couple of more details, you'll find in there. Um, and then you can go and explore this site yourself. Um, there's one more thing that I would like to announce. And that is that we have a giveaway. So um, because we thought that it's a great opportunity for people to upskill, um, what we'll do is we give everybody time until next week, Sunday, the 17th of May, um, midnight. So that's still Sunday night, Monday morning. Um, you can do as many badges as you want and send us a link to your acclaimed profile that, that consolidates all your badges um, to the Auckland Tuck email address. And for each batch that you will complete, you get one ticket to get in the draw for one of those three books. Um, the fine print for that is um, you must be based in New Zealand. Um, so I'm sorry for everybody who dialed in from, from international locations. Um, if you work for Tableau or Salesforce or for a Tableau partner, you are uh, excluded as well. Um, you can only win one book. So in case you're drawn once, you cannot be drawn a second time. Um, and we'll attempt to hand it over if possible. If you live too far away from us, we will ship it. Um, that said, that's obviously once the lockdown is over, or it'll be easy enough for us to, um, to ship the whole thing. Um, some of those books are actually in the office still, um, so I'll need to go and pick them up myself. Um, I think that's it. Um, yeah, um, all badges count. If you have done them in the past already, send us the link to your profile anyway, um, and you'll go into the draw as well. Um, with that, I think that's it from me. Um, let me see if there are any... Um, let me stop sharing my screen and then see if there are any questions. Um, I can't see any in the Q&A. No, we haven't had anything through on Q&A just yet. So just a reminder, uh, in your Zoom controls, there's an option there for a Q&A. Uh, so just drop your question in there and submit that through and then we can, um, we can pick that up and answer anything that comes through. Um, have you read any of the books, Alex? Uh, I read, wait, which, I read all of them. Yes. Oh, no, 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 that's a bit of a stretch, maybe. Uh, some of them are quite technical and they're not really big books that you read them, that you actually read them. Um, but I did read How Charts Lie. I actually did the whole uh, storytelling with data, but I did not read um, all of the middle of my back pocket. Um, so that's more sort of a reference guide that I picked through, but I have them all here. Cool. We just had a couple of comments and uh, I had it myself. Your audio came and went just a wee bit. So uh, hopefully everyone got um, everything that Alex was talking through there. Um, again, we will share the slides uh, through as well. And of course, any questions that if you may have missed something, then let us know uh, and we can make sure we answer that too. We just had uh, yeah. a question in the Q&A. Um, somebody asks if there are any data science certification I can recommend or talk to. Um, the, the honest answer is no. <laughs> I'm not a data scientist. Um, I know from, like, I think there is a, there's a data scientist badge on the Tableau e-learning, um, but that's probably not what you are after. Um, it's more sort of the, the analytical feature, features within Tableau. Um, if you are actual, after actual data science certification, as in, I don't know, R, statistical packages, and that sort of things, um, I'm really not sure. I would probably start looking at, at stuff like Udemy or so, where you can, where you can do some of, the, um, some of the courses and actually get a certificate afterwards, but nothing that I can personally um, uh, recommend.
Cool, and we're getting a few other people in the uh, the chat itself uh, answering potentially that question too. So um, keep an eye on that, uh, as well as um, our good friend Google. You know, absolutely, there's uh, there's some good e-learning content out there outside of Tableau as well. Yeah, the likes of uh, edX and and a few others uh, that run these types of courses. Uh, some of them are free, some of them are maybe ten dollars, um, and others go up from there. So. But uh, there's, there's definitely plenty out there. It's a case of finding one that uh, suits your the subject area the most. The e-learning the e that Alex has been referring to is Tableau specific and discovers different uh, tracks based on different roles. So you may, you may be more in the executive team. So there's some, there's some track around that. Uh, if you're more uh, a desktop user only, you know, there's definitely some, uh, some desktop focused type tracks as well and, and uh, a good mix throughout. So um, yeah. And just to reiterate, free for 90 days. So uh, to enter that giveaway, sign up. You've got access to it for 90 days. Uh, at least show us one of your badges before um, the end of next week, and you'll be in the draw for one of those books. I think uh, if we take it from there, are you happy that we introduce and move over to Steve, Alex? Yep, I think that's it with the questions. OK, good stuff. So Steve, there he is. Everyone can hopefully see Steve now. and. Um, are you able to share your screen, Steve? Sure am. So far, everyone else is, is bald. Um, am I the only one with a, uh, a lockdown haircut? About 20 centimeters too long. <laughs> I've, uh, I've got a lockdown shave. <laughs> we can see your screen now, Steve. So um, I'll hand it over to you and uh, off you go. Thank you very much. Um, cheers for that. So yeah, I'm going to talk to you guys um, about honing your skills with Make Own for Monday. So my name is Steve Wood and I'm a BI analyst working for MTF Finance in Dunedin. I've been using Tableau for about four years and Make Over Monday was one way that I've practiced and improved my Tableau skills after completing the classroom based training. So what is Make Over Monday all about? Well, if you jump onto Twitter, then it might try to tell you that it's about sprucing up your pet or potentially redoing your bathroom. Um, you'll just need to scroll past those tweets to get to the real Makeover Monday. Um, what it's actually about is improving charts like the one on this slide. So every week a chart and data is shared and the database community are challenged to make a better, more effective visualization. Um, like this very quick example that identifies the top preference um, for your pizza toppings a lot more clearly than the previous example. Um, you can use any tool, but a large proportion of people use Tableau as that's where the project started off back in 2016. It's currently run by Eva Murray and Charlie Hutchison and has grown to include a book and partnerships with various organizations. And I think I saw the book in the uh, prize pack uh, well worth entering for that. Um, there are a lot of community projects out there, so why would you pick this one? Um, well, it depends what you're looking for, really. If you want to practice both Tableau and data visualization skills, then it's a great weekly opportunity to do that. Um, for a lot of people, it also ends up being a really good way to build and showcase a portfolio of data visualizations. Or for some, get into blogging. So if you have to think about, unpack, and communicate your design decisions, it's amazing how much more that makes you think about those decisions. For some people, it's about making a difference. So once a month, um, Makeover Monday is in partnership with Opfistula, and that's a great way um, for people to actually feel like they're making a difference through their database skills. So that's more geared towards visualizing um, gender equality as part of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Some people do make over Monday as a challenge or perhaps to gain a bit of recognition in the database community. And whilst that's not really the underlying intent, you do certainly hear of people crediting make over Monday with helping their career moves. Um, the practice and the challenge were the main reasons that I started. Uh, the opportunities to fully utilize Tableau at work were yet to really emerge for me. Um, so I'd been through the training, but there weren't really the projects to sink my teeth into. So attempting a full year was one way to encourage and drive me developing my skills each week, just taking that little bit of time. 
you guys may find that I come and go. I've got slightly dodgy internet down here in Dunedin, so I'll talk a bit slower and hopefully it'll come good. Um, I will say that completing a full year of Makeover Mondays was quite tough, but I learned heaps, so it's well worth trying. Um, I've built up a portfolio of nearly 100 data visualizations now on Tableau Public and had some pretty nice surprises along the way. So I certainly didn't expect to have a viz displayed at the UN General Assembly in New York back in 2017, but that's what happened. So anyone who contributed that week ended up with their um, contribution demoed at um, the United Nations. And I didn't expect to have a viz published in a book, but that's what happened. Uh, the skills I've learned have really helped to uncover and communicate insights at work as well. So there's been a benefit there. So how do you get involved? Well, the project is really well set up for people to join in. Um, if you go to the Makeover Monday website, which is www.makeovermonday.co.uk, scroll on down the homepage and you'll eventually find a timeline running through from Sunday through to Saturday. And you'll also find a six step um, guide that explains the weekly process. Um, so I won't do it nearly as much justice as the um, website. So please do go over there and have a look after this meeting. But um, I'm going to touch on each of the steps and hopefully share a few tips as we go. Um, now, as um, Jeff said, we will share slide, things like slides and tips afterwards so you don't have to feel you have to note these down. And hopefully I've picked some tips that are useful for people who've never tried Makeover Monday and some that are useful for people that have. So first up, you're going to want to review the original chart and get the data. Um, Eva and Charlie will tweet on Sunday about the new chart and data set. And you'll jump over to the website, click through to data sets under the participate menu, and you'll see a table of data sets with the latest week at the top. Each week there's a link to the data source on data.world. Now that's a website you'll need to register for, um, and a link to the original chart with any accompanying article. It's worth noting that it's free to register for data.world, and in fact, any of the tools you'll need for Makeover Monday, you can all um, you can get all of them for free. A couple of tips for this step of the makeover process. Please do read the article. It's very tempting to try and save time by not reading it, but there's often some really useful context and background that you can dig into. And I'm sure we've all found out that spending some time understanding context, context almost always pays us back as analysts. Also try and remember the purpose of Makeover Monday. So for some of you, you might be using it as an opportunity to try different chart types but do take the time to ask yourself what works well with the original chart and what could be improved. That will really help you focus on what you want to make over. Now, sometimes those improvements might only need to be minor. You might make slightly better use of color or change the title, uh, but sometimes you might be doing a completely different chart. And I would say invest the time that suits you. Step two is to analyze the data and make over the chart. So the fun bit, you're going to open up the data set in Tableau to explore and understand the data. You'll hopefully find your story and build an improved chart. Um, if you aim to do this on Monday or Tuesday, then that means you'll be able to get some of the feedback that's on offer later in the week. Um, that doesn't always work out for me. Um, sometimes I'm left doing the visit, the makeover on Friday or even Saturday. Um, it's worth noting that the data won't always match the original chart. So it's a really good tip is to get into any nuances in the data, really dig in. Does it start and end partway through a year? And would that impact any seasonal comparisons you might want to do? Or are there some fields that need to be transformed or pivoted to make the analysis easier? Once into the visual exploration, I quite like to keep um, a series of working sheets as I explore the different angles. That way I can come back to points that I want to focus on and refine those for later. And as I refine them, usually the ideas for a dashboard and sequencing of a story start to emerge in my mind. Um, I've probably explained that terribly. The best tip I can give you is to go and watch some of Andy Kreeble's live Makeover Monday videos. That way you can see exactly where he spends his time, how he goes about exploring data and creating a better data viz. So what you want to do is go jump over to Google or do a YouTube search for Andy Kreeble, watch me viz, and you should see exactly what I mean and he'll describe it much, much better. Once you've built a viz, you're going to want to publish it. Um, you'll be publishing the viz to Tableau Public, and so you'll need to create an account on that site. Again, that's free. Big thanks to Tableau. 
Um, once you've registered, you can log in from Tableau Desktop and then publish straight from there to your Tableau, Tableau public profile. If you plan to blog about each makeover, then you'll need to, um, you'll find that that does take some time. Um, for the year I did, I tried to blog every week and that was probably an extra hour a week of time for me, but I'm quite a slow writer. It can help to keep notes as you review the original chart and explore the data. That way you can structure them into a blog post at the end. Now you don't need to blog. If you're short of time, feel free not to do that aspect. Um, I think most participants probably don't do the blogging bit. Uh, my final tip in this section is to have a mental checklist. So I have one that I go through before publishing. I think some people even keep a written checklist just to remind themselves of some of the key things. Otherwise, it's really easy to forget about um, sensible things to check, like have you set your tooltips up? Or have you spell checked your captions? So this is an example checklist that covers a few of the things that I aim to remember. Um, I won't go through this in detail now. Hopefully it'll be in the slide pack at the end, but a couple of key ones for me, uh, check my title and annotations are really clear. Does the viz answer any question that I've posed in the title? Nothing worse than having a really snappy title, but then kind of forgetting to actually address the question in your title and your charts. Uh, and often it's good to make sure that it's easily understandable by someone new to the topic. Um, I try showing my partner, but she's not really into data viz, so I almost get a mm, response. Um, keep the charts as simple as possible. It's a constant battle to remove things from a viz instead of adding things. Well, it is for me anyway. Um, I think maybe that's true of any designer. But simpler is often clearer and quite often better. And I don't just mean chart junk like heavy grid lines. Do you really need to add an extra pat bubble chart onto a dashboard to fill some space? Um, spell checking is a bit of a frustration. Um, so I'll often copy blocks of text back to Word to do spell checking. And finally, adding source and image credits is really good practice to get into. After you've published your viz, you're going to want to share it now. Well, I think you will. For some, this is the bit where they stop and they get a bit nervous about sharing. But I'd really encourage you to submit. Post your viz on Twitter. Um, submit it via the form on the website. Um, if you want to improve, then chances are you do need to engage with people and seek feedback on your work. It's a really good way to work out whether you're, you're hitting the nail on the head or whether you need to refine your messaging. Um, so first up, I post a tweet with the static image and a link to the viz on Tableau Public. And I remember to include the Makeover Monday hashtag and to tag Eva and Charlie, the organizers. After that, I fill in the submission tracker form on the website. And doing that means that it gets included in the submission tracker dashboard so you can keep track of how you're um, tracking compared to other participants. Some tips for this step are to um, not get too disheartened if you get no feedback, or perhaps you get some unexpected feedback. Um, I'm sure some of you will have experienced this, but it's very difficult to deliver feedback in a way that suits everybody on Twitter. So take what you get as a gift that you can either use or discard. Um, sometimes the weekly topic will generate some interesting debate. There can be some quite controversial topics. Uh, and you'll start to wonder if you should revisit your viz and make changes. Um, that really is your choice. You may simply choose to add a disclaimer, or you may address anything that needs rework. And I only mention that so you're prepared. It doesn't happen very often, um, so don't let it worry you. Um, if you do want specific feedback, then sign up for the weekly viz review. So the organizers are pretty unlikely to provide feedback on Twitter due to time constraints. Um, but you can register for their weekly webinar and request feedback. There's a little bit of a process to this. So you have to use the MM Viz Review tag in your tweet and you have to register for the webinar. Um, it is an amazing opportunity to get feedback and learn. So if you are new to DataViz and you want to participate, I would encourage this bit. A key tip is to only use the hashtag if you will register and attend the event, the webinar. Otherwise, it makes it really hard for the organizers to prepare. They kind of have to match back from people who've registered to the visitors on Twitter. Also, do work through and incorporate any feedback that you're given because it, one, helps you to reinforce the learnings, and two, it shows Eva and Charlie that their input is worthwhile. Finally, you can also learn from others. So you can check out the other submissions during the week. Often I get most value just by following the Makeover Monday hashtag on Twitter throughout the week. You'll see some really cool visits go past. 
some angles you'd never have thought of trying and probably some techniques that you're really keen to dig into. Ask yourself what you like about other people's ideas and if they allow it, see if you can download their Tableau public workbook and then you can see how they achieved whatever they've done. If you do want to use their approach, then probably try to rebuild it, not just copy it, that way you'll learn more. And do remember to credit them in your tweet and on Tableau Public. I think Jeff actually plans to include a reference to the Tableau Public inspiration feature in the slide pack for us. It's not something I've used before. At the end of the week, the organizers will talk about their weekly favorites. And this can be a really nice recognition of a good job for those that are selected, whether that be for their initial submission or perhaps how they've iterated after getting feedback. Please don't get disheartened if you don't get selected. Ultimately, it's quite a subjective thing. And there's, I think this year, there's been a thousand people participate so far and only maybe five or six people get selected a week. Do remember why you decided to take part and ensure that um, you're getting what you want out of it, not just seeking um, the recognition of being selected every now and then. And if you benefit from Makeover Monday, then please try to pay it forward in the future. Um, for me, it's been great to use my knowledge helping out on the Tableau forums. For you, it might be getting more involved with your local user group. Um, one question I've been asked is how long it takes to do Makeover Monday. Um, people often have concerns about the time commitment. So it's quite easy to be put off by some of the amazing visitors by others in the community. Uh, you might start to worry that, God, they must be spending hours doing their makeovers or, wow, the standard's just too high. Why would I get involved? Um, I usually tell myself I'll spend an hour or two, but it doesn't always work out that way. So let's take this um, chart as an example. So the original here is attempting to show which characteristics are most important in a romantic partner. Um, it has a great title, uh, but the actual chart is quite hard to interpret. So each color is a characteristic, and hence you've got to keep referring back from the bar chart, the stat bar charts up to the legend to really work out what's going on. Uh, personally, I find it quite hard to read. Whether you'll find my makeover any better is also an interesting question. So this is the makeover, and it probably took me around six hours to do in that particular week. I think I spent a couple of hours for a few evenings over the course of the week. So definitely not something that I was able to fit into one evening. I do do mine in the evenings. I, I don't do this during work time. Um, I did here enjoy hitting on the blend of an area chart, chart and a heat map. I thought that was a really interesting way to show the data. It gives a general sense that personality on the left gets way more heat than money on the right, which is probably quite good news, right? Um, but it also lets you scan down through the responses from different countries. So it was super interesting for me to see that looks were more important to respondents from Hong Kong about a third of the way down the list. And you can see that little peak of interest under the looks area. And really interesting that common interests seem to be less important to respondents from Thailand, which is down in the bottom third over on the right hand side. Um, so if we go back to the example that I used earlier of our favorite pizza toppings, um, the pizza analogy is quite great here because we are obviously talking about pizza toppings. But um, what's not quite so great is that the way the pizza sliced up can quite easily be confused with the pie chart. And the size of the slices is actually telling us nothing in this biz. You have to read all the way around the chart to the very bottom to see that mushrooms are more popular, the most popular topping. Um, this makeover isn't, isn't actually my um, final submission for the week. It took about 10 minutes to do in Tableau. So you'd come in at well under the hour if, once you included downloading exploring the data and publishing. It would be a perfectly valid submission for Makeover Monday as it improves on the hard to read approach of the original chart. Mushrooms are much more clearly showing as the top preference, hopefully. Um, and one of the organizers is known as Bar Chart Charlie for his quick, simple bar chart makeovers. So there's nothing wrong uh, and quite a lot right with a quick, simple 10 minute improvement and you'll still learn a whole heap from doing it. So if time commitment or skill level is your main concern for not getting involved, then I'd probably challenge you on that. You can time box your commitment. You can focus on simplicity and still learn a lot. Uh, or you could maybe just aim for once a month and go for a little bit more design emphasis, but on a less frequent um, basis. 
Well, thanks very much for taking the time to hear about Makeover Monday today. In summary, it's a great way to practice and improve your Tableau and data visualization skills. If you do end up participating, then probably my top seven tips are always read the article. Ask yourself what works and what doesn't work with the original chart. After all, you're here to make it better. Um, do explore the data and potential stories before building a viz. Try and have a pre-published checklist and make sure things like your title are clear. And do share your work, go on, take the plunge. Um, use the viz review process to get feedback, but make sure it's feedback that you'll action. And make sure you remember why you're participating. Don't let it become a chore, then it's just not so much fun. So if you're ready to give it a go after this user group meeting, then you can make a start at www.makeovermonday.co.uk. And I look forward to seeing many more New Zealand makeovers. Thank you very much. I'll just have a quick look and see what questions, if any, are coming up. Cool, great, Steve. Yeah, let's, let's have a look at the Q&A stuff. Thank you. Um, mm, I can see any in there, but I saw some popping up in the chat before. Um, well, one question that's quite interesting to ask is about the data sets. Uh, a yeah. good thing about Makeover Mondays is that it exposes you to subjects you wouldn't otherwise know about. Uh, so what's some of the most interesting ones that you've come across uh, that you liked best? Ah, yeah, great question. Um, I think most of them are interesting. So I don't think I've ever hit one that I haven't found interesting. Um, I have a backup slide, um, which may or may not show up on the screen. This was probably the one that I found most insightful and interesting when I did it. It's one from way back in 2017, I think. And this is a submission from um, a guy called Athan, I think. Um, Avrantis, can't never pronounce his last name. Um, Athan mm. Mavrantonis. Um, so you were, we were presented with some data on if the world were 100 people, which is basically percentages, right? Um, how many people would be starving? How many people would be homeless? How many people would get secondary education? And Athens' approach was to look through that data set and just hit on one really simple stat. If the world were 100 people, one would be starving. But then he turned it into a really scary big number. That, that It isn't just one in 100 people actually 7.5 billion people so that one really stuck in my mind um, but yeah you could pick almost any um, some of the um, the collaborations have been pretty interesting so the, the collaboration with the UN that was a really interesting data set um, and the ones with Opfistula so this one the one this week is um, really quite challenging um, if anyone does give it a go it's, it's probably one of the more challenging ones to start with. It's quite a, um, a, a very upsetting topic in a lot of ways. Um, so learning how to deal with data sympathetically is quite a good skill to learn. Yeah, cool. Sorry, I um, thought horribly there. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that was great, that was great. Um, Yeah, I, th I think that's, um, if uh, I didn't see any other questions coming, um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions for Steve uh, later on as well, you can ask uh, in the Q&A feature there. So just hovering yeah. on your screen, you can see the Q&A stuff uh, and keep them coming because we can address them later on as well. Um, yeah, I think we're um, ready to jump into uh, uh, the next uh, the next presentation with Sarah, if you're fine with um, everything, uh, Steph, is that okay? Thank you. Yeah, cool. Can I, can I uh, sorry, just really, really quickly, can I just, um, uh, I think Alex has put a link to, he has, into Steve's Tableau public profile in the Oh, yeah, sure. Um, there's plenty of good examples in there, so we'd encourage you to, to jump in there at some point and check that out. But again, we'll, we'll share that link uh, along with the others, but that's, uh, that's where they all sit, right, Steve? All the ones yeah, yeah. So yeah. Thanks for jumping in, Jeff. Yep. Cool. Um, yeah, I think we're ready to move on to Sarah then. Cool. Hi. Hello, Hi, Sarah. Hi, I'm so just going to start. Oh, sorry. Go. 
Yeah, no, I was just going to introduce you. So Sarah is the leader of Tableau User Group in Singapore. So she's joining us from Singapore now, but uh, she's Kiwi as well. Um, yeah, and she's going to talk to us about those very elusive unicorns with lots of skills <laughs> um, that everybody hunts down, but nobody really finds. So yeah, let's let's jump into it. Great, thank you. So yes, my name is Sarah, and um, I was referred to as Sarah from Singapore, but you can probably tell that I am actually from New Zealand. I've been here now for uh, five years in Singapore, um, and I am, I think it's my third year as a Singapore Tableau user group leader, um, and I am also a social ambassador for Tableau, um, you can find me on Twitter at uh, CSB. Um, I have been to quite a few of the Tableau conferences now. I think it's three, three US ones and the one in Europe last year. And um, like Steve, I actually did all of the 2018 Makeover Mondays. So a lot of what Steve said really resonated with me. And I think, um, like he kind of said as well, if you want to um, learn more about it, just get in and start doing it. And yeah, don't be, don't be scared to, to publish, um, publish um, it up. Sarah, Sarah we, we currently see your notes and not the presentation. Oh, sorry. Let me reshare. Is that yeah, better? That's better. Yep, better, okay. thanks. Okay, cool. Okay. So let's get in here. So today um, I'm going to talk about when, quite often when I'm attending uh, events uh, through Singapore back in, back in the old days, um, people would always ask me, you know, when, when they found out what I did and I, I um, head data democratization at a large financial institution here in Singapore, um, and, and I hire a lot of different Tableau resources for, for different projects, both onshore and offshore. So quite, a, quite often one of the questions that I get asked is, do I know of any Tableau resources? And, um, and I would always say, like, it, it's such a, you know, it, I would typically say, like, I know and um, I don't have any available and don't steal mine. So then the next question was kind of, where can I find some? And that's probably where this original, um, this presentation started from. So today I'm gonna talk you a little bit through um, how do you score yourself a unicorn? Now, um, a lot of you may be either higher resources or are looking for your next opportunity. So I'm kind of gonna mix this one up. The original time when I did build this presentation, it was for a very focused leadership. Um, and it was a lot of people that were hiring for Tableau, but I think if you're either looking at hiring developers or potentially you want to get rehired as well, I think there'll be tips um, for both of you here today. So quite often we have a, a job description. Now, when I typically ask for, um, you know, I have to fill in a job description and it's very corporate related and things like that. And so I'm, you know, always having to ask for standard things. Um, and it's, you know, it's kind of across multiple stakeholders, diverse team, all this kind of like probably fluff that we typically um, look for. But, but for me, I'm not typically, I'm, I'm more interested in um, people who have got like passion and can show passion and things like that. And I'm, I'm in banking, so um, sometimes I'm looking for banking skills, but typically it's more just on what you can kind of bring in terms of your um, your knowledge with with Tableau and maybe pushing boundaries of visualization, which is um, as as heading the data democratization is something that that I'm really trying to push boundaries on and particularly in finance, which is quite a traditional um, space. So we are really looking at driving our data culture. So. So the, the job descriptions are probably a, a lot different now than, than what they were and not so kind of cut and dry. So the job description is the first thing. And after that, I typically get a lot of resumes. And for me, I get like a little bit overwhelmed. And I think this is one thing for people that are, that are hiring and also people that are looking to be hired. You know, if, if I'm looking at a resume, 
I want something that's kind of short to the point because I'm going to scan read that in probably five to ten seconds. Um, what I do is when I get refined ones is I typically go through and just if I'm looking for a very specific tableau development role then I'm going to go and just do a, a find on the word tableau. I'm going to look if they've got a tableau public uh, profile and I'm just going to look and see if they've got any like passion about about tableau so that's kind of one of the key things that i look for um, when i get a resume now the next thing that comes out after that is i don't actually typically go face to face with the candidate straight away um, what i do do is i send out a really detailed email and um, I, I send these out and i want i want to be as, as the hiring manager i want to be like really clear in my email so i've refined this over over the time and it it kind of looks something like this so we you know probably put a little bit more in about the role but um working through kind of what my steps for for this is and and what it would be is for them to like share their tableau public profile if they have one um, i share mine um, then looking at them to build a um, visualization in in tableau and i'm happy for it to be either in tableau public desktop or um, on tableau public so i'm not expecting them to go and buy tableau desktop although i think if you don't have it you can um, do a, a 14 day trial anyway um, but you can also use tableau public which is free online as long as you publicly publish to tableau public um, so I'm asking them to do a build of, of a visualization. Um, so I attach some quite detailed instructions. Um, I want them to publish it up to Tableau Public. And then um, I'll do like a two stage. So I'll do a review and then um, feedback. And then we'll do a face to face or on, on video uh, interview to which we will discuss the visualization and then maybe talk about other, other visualizations that they have built and then do a, a live build and then go on to some of the Q&A. So um, in, the, in the instructions, I would typically maybe put up a, an example of a, of a current visualization. So I do run it a little bit like uh, Makeover Monday, which Steve has um, very timely just talked talk to you through. Um, and I like ask about the, the you guys are not going to believe this. My cat is eating something behind me. Sorry. Sorry, that was very disturbing. <laughs> here, here is the cat because I think someone just asked the question on that. There we go. Um, I'm, let's hope my son doesn't come in in a minute. The joys of working from home. Uh, okay, so where were we? Um, so yeah, typically in you know kind of a makeover Monday type format, like what do you like about this particular dashboard? What don't you like, and how can you make it better? Um, and I also had to really clearly state, and I went through it through a few iterations to get here, um, that I didn't want a replication of the dashboard. I don't attach the link to this dashboard. I don't want people just downloading it and reverse engineering it in this example. Um, but I'm looking for some story and some insight. Um, so I give them the data set, which is downloadable. Uh, and then I also give them some supporting data if they wanted maybe some population data from, from World Bank or something like that. So quite descriptive in my, in my process. Um, I also share some links that they may find helpful. Uh, and then I ask them again, like to publish it up to Tableau profile. I don't want them to spend more than three hours on this. So um, it's, you know, it's time box, similar to say Makeover Monday, um, share a couple of extra links. And then I also like to just have a quick 15 minute call to discuss this email in case they've got any specific questions. Although now I've found over the years that I've refined this email to a point that if I, if I do have maybe 10 to 20 people that I'm interviewing, I probably don't always have the 15 minute call. Um, so just going through the link, so here's my Tableau public profile. Um, I am have built some COVID-19 visits at the moment, which is um, an interesting piece. Uh, Makeover Monday, which again, Steve had spoken about. It's a great site, wealth of information. Um, 
totally recommend what Steve said about watching some of Andy Creeble's stuff, even all the um, historical ones are up here as well. I think they're like one hour webinars, you can listen to them. So you could even take like an old data site, uh, an old uh, Makeover Monday, rebuild it yourself and then maybe listen to some of the feedback that was given. Some great stuff there. Uh, storytelling with data, which happens to be one of the books that you guys can win, I think, by getting some badges. Um, I was lucky enough to do the workshop, amazing course, and she's actually published a second book as well. Um, so that's a really great, great read, and um, I really recommend going through that. Uh, and then also, obviously, a great source of of information as, as Tableau Public itself. I think you can now like sign up for Viz of the Day to come into your inbox, which is great. Um, information is Beautiful is another link that I recommend people take a look at. Um, I think it's got some really beautiful stuff on there. Um, not all Tableau, but some, still some great um, visualizations and ideas. Uh, so now just let's talk a little bit about the data. So the data set that I do is um, a coffee data set. I've been using it for so long now that one of my hires is um, a little bit over it. She's over critiquing people coming in to, to work for us. And she has worked for me for, for two different roles in two different organizations now. So I'm getting a little bit of slack about my coffee data set these days, but I, I like it. Um, it's got a it's, it's pretty basic data set. It's got um, the commodities, it's got country, it's got a nice country code. Um, there's a couple of things that can trip you up, the market year and the calendar year. I think it's like when the data was collected and then what date, what year it represented. So there's a couple of little tricks for, for new beginners in there. Um, there's another little hiccup in there where it talks about um, European Union. And I think that just goes, the data goes back to the 60s, but European Union obviously just being built and I think like 2000s. Um, unfortunately, like all the historical non-European Union countries aren't there. So it's kind of, you'll see a big spike if you don't quite look at the data properly. So there's a couple of tricks, but the beauty about this, this data set is, is it's easily downloadable. It's a CSV file and it doesn't actually require any cleanup in it, except for those kind of nuances really. So we look at the data. Um, if I do do the 15 minute call, I just it's, it's a really quick, quick um, call. And it's really to look at their um, communication skills and whether they could interpret, interpret the requirements that I had laid out in the email. Um, so here, I'm a bit of a data person, obviously. So I'll just give them kind of a quick, quick ranking for, um, for me. Uh, next on is the viz. So here's one of the examples of, of a visualization that I got back. Sorry about the quality of, of the screenshot. Um, so this one here, um, I thought it was quite an interesting one, um, looking kind of really at a particular story. So looking at um, when beginning and end stocks, it was quite a visual, visual piece. Um, and it obviously you can't see here, but had a, had a few interactions where you could go and click on different countries. Um, so what I did is I gave a little bit of feedback. Um, this is just an example of it. I don't really expect it you to read it all, but um, just a couple of things and maybe some stuff that was missing in terms of clarification and, and maybe what the user didn't wouldn't have picked up on. So really in a real Makeover Monday type feedback and if you do um, or are familiar or have listened to any of the, the webinars, it's, it's very similar. I kind of talk a little bit about what they do like about it, um, suggest some changes and, um, and yeah, just, you know, kind of point out there that I am being very critical and, and that it is all subjective feedback because I don't really want to go and offend people when I'm trying to interview them. Um, so then after that, um, I give them, I just ask them to spend like about an hour or so updating that visualization. Um, and then this was, this was the one that came back. So just a kind of a quick example of some of the feedback. Um, then let's move on to the interview. So the, the interview is, um, it's typically 60 minutes long and um, whether it's onshore or offshore will depend if it's in face to face or if it's um, if it's over over a call obviously all of them are over calls at the moment um, 
the first 20 minutes, I'll, I'll talk about the, the visualization design that they did on the Coffee Biz, and we'll talk about some of the choices they made, um, the insight, the learnings, kind of what they found in terms of challenges, whether it was the data, um, or you know, building some particular visualizations and why they chose. And we'll talk a little bit about um, reducing cognitive load, which I find for a lot of the pieces that I talk about is, um, is quite a hot topic. It's, it's something like whether it's removing a lot of the colour or things like that. So we'll kind of, I'll kind of talk through and, and in that I'll get a good understanding of what the strengths and weaknesses of the candidate is. Um, then after that, I do something which my team think is a little bit horrible and, and that is, is I will actually get them to do a 10 minute live build on that visualization. So we'll, we'll share screens um, and I'll get them to open up a new copy of Tableau and connect to the data source. And then I'll, I'll ask them to, to build a, a visualization on that. Um, and then I will also just do a little bit of a talk about maybe some visualizations that they've built that they can share. Um, or they could talk about maybe some visualizations that they've seen in, in the community or just online in general and what they like and they don't like about it. And that kind of gives me a, a good understanding of what people um, kind of tend to, to lean towards and, and, and where their kind of visualization best practice lies as well. Um, after that, I will do, you know, obviously have some, some Q&A on, um, on if they have, you know, questions about the role and things like that. So um, through that, I do, again, another kind of a bit of a ranking. So I break it into some, some key areas. Um, and then so the 10 minute live this build, I, I typically try and focus on maybe pieces that, that they do or don't no, or I think things that they've kind of maybe not demonstrated in the, the coffee viz and the business that they've shown me or, or even when we've been talking a little bit. Um, so this was just an example. I think this was done in about five minutes. It was kind of build um, looking at the, the different um, dimensions in the coffee viz by countries and, and ranking those and things like that. And then maybe if there's some time at the end, I'll ask them to do a bit of formatting on that as well. So this is just an example of an interactive 10 minute build. Um, okay, so then, yeah, I think that was the, the rest of the, the, um, the statistics that I will, will rank people on. And obviously I'll write notes along with that as well. Um, the final step of the, of, the present, of the interview, and this is done at another date, and it's probably one of the most important steps, and that is getting um, um, them to meet with the team. So as a potential kind of unicorn, I need my, hoard, my herd of, of unicorns to, um, to get some insight into, into how this particular member will, will fit. And, and it's also a good um, opportunity for the candidate to ask around the organizational culture and maybe what my management style is like, because I've been told it's quite different, um, particularly here in Singapore. Um, whether that's good or bad, I'm not sure. Um, so then they'll also collectively kind of score the potential unicorn and, um, and give some feedback on, on the, the candidate. Um, so yeah, just, just something like this. Um, so I think like part of being a good um, analyst, then I like to weigh up all the scores and take in some of my commentary and stuff and then, and then look, look at um, the successful candidates and, and then welcome them into the herd. So that is pretty much the process. Um, some bits that I'd like to kind of just add on to is I think if you're also going for an interview, um, as a, say a Tableau developer, some things that you could maybe bring to the interview that I think would be great would be some top visualizations that you've built, um, why you've built them, or even like this could even be part of, of your job application. Um, you know, kind of maybe people that you follow or things that you follow um, in terms of just, you know, pushing boundaries on, on data visualization. So that is, oh, that is me. Um, I have written a little bit about it, so you can follow the bit.ly there or the QR code. Um, I am on Twitter, and
and also I'm an occasional blogger. So, um, any particular questions? I think I got through that in record time, which is great, because I do have a call in uh, 20 minutes, but I do oh. have time for some questions. So, thanks for that. Um, I, I do like how you refer to your team as a herd of unicorns. Oh. <laughs> that's, that, that's a new one. Um, I, I, uh, I actually was in touch with Sarah um, probably about a year ago because um, we wanted to apply something internally and I think it works really well um, and it, it's, it's a nice framework that you can sort of adjust to yourself and to your needs. Um, I, again, if anybody has questions, feel free to ask them, otherwise I'll, I'll ask a few things in the meantime. Um, how much did the process change from sort of the first time you, you thought about that to what it is now? Yeah, so I think uh, I could probably just talk a little bit about why I developed this process as well. So I was in a position, and it's happened a couple of times, where I've had to hire entire projects of full of Tableau developers, and it's been offshore. And so a, a lot of, and, I, and I'm getting contractors from, from particular agencies, and what I was finding is their CVs looked great. It all looked great on paper, then I would get them on board, and their skill sets were, were not quite right for the role. So that's why I took the initiative to build this up. Um, and then the, some of the key refining pieces have really been in just articulating those emails and getting it kind of right down to like clearly stating how much time I want people to spend. And also just um, making it a fast turnaround as well. So if I, if I email the candidate, say on a, and I do try and give them the weekend. Like if I email them on a, on a Thursday, then I do expect the, the bill to be back on kind of the Monday. So I don't want it to kind of drag over a week or two or things like that. And then the feedback, I try and give the feedback as quickly as I can. So within like 48 hours and then asking them again if they can come back within 48 hours. So I think it was just a, a bit of process alignment. Um, and like I said as well, it hasn't always been, like at first I did need to have those, um, the, the 15 minute calls just to reiterate things, but I find now people are fine just to pick it up and run with the, with the email. Cool. Um, so Steve said that they were actually looking into a more interactive recruitment process and they were worried about um, putting candidates at ease for, for life building sessions. Um, do you have any recommendation, like how to deal with people and how to how to make them comfortable in in this ten minute life build? Yeah, so I did. I do give them a lot of warning about it, and I think I talk about it initially in the email as well. Um, I, you know, I think it's it's kind of just the the way you can kind of just you know talk personally about it and and try not to be too harsh. I don't I don't go by a plan. Of, of the 10 minute build and I try and take it at, at their pace. So I'm not handing over a 50 step and let's see how quickly you can get through this. It's more like a, let's just work with your strengths and maybe if I can, I'll try and push you on something that I think is, is a bit of a weakness. But I will start quite slowly in terms of like, you know, connect to the data source. Um, can you, yeah, build a tree map or something like that and then, if I feel that the candidate has the potential, I will speed it up and, and try and get more and more out of them. But it's not, it's not to break the candidate, it's kind of just to get an understanding because often in, in our roles, you know, you are sitting in front of a stakeholder who's like, but I want to change this and I want this, this and this. And so a live build is something that, that I expect um, my herd to be able to do really well. Yeah. Cool. And one more question that came through the Q&A. Um, visualization is sometimes subjective. Do you also have a peer review um, or ask your colleagues for um, pre or prior to actually giving the feedback to the candidates? Uh, yes, I mean, I, I do put in there that it is very subjective. Um, quite often now, I will actually push the feedback out to my team to give their feedback. Um, the way I run my teams here is we have daily stand-ups and in those stand-ups we are constantly giving feedback throughout the team. I think there's, there's 10 developers in my team at the moment. So my team are always are quite trained on giving feedback. Um, 
and and I do highlight that it's subjective. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it, it's an idea, definitely. If you if you feel that your feedback is is not going to be correct, you could obviously canvas it out with others as well. Cool, sweet. Thank you for that. Um, thanks for dialing in from Singapore and and sharing your process with us. Um, and we'll let you back to your meeting in fifteen minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, before we continue, um, just one more thing that we did mention before. Um, you might have seen in the in the splash registration page that we um, we teased sort of a, a pizza giveaway. Um, so yesterday we uh, sent out pizza vouchers to I think around fifteen people. Um, I do see that some of them dialed in. Um, so I hope you made good use out of that voucher and. Um, and have a pizza. So maybe, may, maybe tell everybody um, what sort of pizza you got. Oh, there's Costa who, who got one. Um, yeah, sorry for those who didn't get one and sorry for the ones that were not based in New Zealand. Again, that was sort of a, a national thing. Um, so I hope we could bring a little bit of that usual tuck feel um, to you at home now. Um, so with that, um, we come to our last presenter, which is Heidi Kalbe from Germany. Um, Heidi actually was in New Zealand a month or well, five or six weeks ago. Um, she traveled to, to Australia for holiday and thought she would stop by New Zealand. Um, we had met last year at the Tableau conference uh, and I promised her I would organize the Tableau user group for her to talk at. Um, well, long story short, I did organize the Tableau user group, but unfortunately we had to cancel it because um, we were not allowed to host events anymore. Um, so Heidi was here, we spent I think four or five days exploring Auckland and the islands around um, and then she had to go back to Australia and travel through all that madness. Um, so now I fulfilled my promise I hope and organized the, um, the talk for her to speak at. Um, yeah, welcome Heidi, thanks for getting up um, as Jeff said at a ridiculous hour um, and you are going to talk to us about the newly introduced set and parameter actions. That's right. Thanks for having me. Thanks for organizing again. <laughs> and I'll just pull up my screen. So you should be able to see Tableau, is that correct? Yes, all good. All right, perfect. So does it sometimes happen to you that you see a tweet or a LinkedIn post where one of the Tableau Jedis of our community does something that you never thought was possible in Tableau and it completely blows your mind? Because it happens to me. It happens to me more and more frequently, especially in the past year, year and a half. Tableau keeps rapidly publishing new features. Some of the biggest recent game changes amongst them were set actions and parameter actions. We've seen people accomplish amazing things with these two features. And I will mention which visits to check out later on. But for this session, I want to get back down to the basics. So we're going to talk about what we had before set and parameter actions. We're going to talk about what are sets and what are parameters. I'll tell you how set actions and parameter actions change the way that we viz, what it is that either action can or cannot do, and especially I'm gonna help you decide when to use one over the other. As Alex and Jeff mentioned, please don't worry about taking notes or anything. Um, I have all of this written down in my blog, and they're probably gonna send that out with the link as well later on. So let's dive right in. What kind of interactivity did we have before set and parameter actions? Well, of course we had and still have filter actions. These help us limit which data is being shown. But sometimes users have difficulty understanding what is being filtered. And the interaction between quick filters and action filters can be a bit messy, even if you synchronize them. Filtering across multiple dashboards can turn up bugs. Um, you do not have the option to exclude things by clicking on them with an action filter. And you often, depending on the use case, need multiple actions. 
What we also have are uh, highlight action. These help us visually highlight set and selected values. But once you click anywhere else, the highlight will be gone because you deselect it. And again, it can be messy highlighting across multiple dashboards. If you want to highlight a certain field and you don't have it in a sheet, that whole sheet will be grayed out, which can be confusing. Reference lines that have been recalculated upon the highlighting will reset once you deselect, which is not necessarily what you want. And again, depending on your use case, you might need multiple actions. And this is where set actions come into play. I like to describe sets in my trainings as similar to an exclusive nightclub. You're either in or you're out. There's nothing in between. You create a set for a specific dimension and it sticks to that dimension. You choose which values of that dimension are in the set and which are not. So technically speaking, sets kind of work like Boolean fields and Tableau writes true or false into every row of your data, depending on whether that dimension value is in the set or not. We can use sets for many purposes. We often use them for easy filtering because you only need to drag and drop your set into the filter card and Tableau automatically keeps only the in values. You can also drag your set to color, size or shape to change the marks and you can use it in calculations. Usually your calculation will go something like this. If set, then measure, end. Since the set works like a Boolean, you don't need anything more in your condition, depending on what you want to do. So you can use this calculation to filter implicitly rather than explicitly when you still want to see other values that are not in the set, but want to limit one measure to only the values that you have in the set. Let's take a look at an example. I've built a very simple dashboard here looking at the CO2 emissions of 250 countries from 1960 to 2014. This is not the height of design, it's just to work as an example. I want to highlight a few selected countries. I'm gonna go out of the full screen mode and I want to highlight them using a highlight action. So that's what I'm gonna do. I go to dashboard, add an action, choose the highlight and this should work from either sheet upon my selection i want either sheet to be highlighted just using the country name and if i now click on a line we can see that the related bar is being highlighted this is not super easy to see so let's try the other way around i'm gonna select a couple of bars and we can see these lines are being highlighted at the bottom or more technically speaking, all the other lines that are not highlighted are being grayed out. But I have a, another dashboard using the same data source, and I want this one to be highlighted as well. And for that, I need to, act, uh, to add another highlight action. So again, go to the first dashboard, add a highlight action from either sheet. Upon my selection, I want this other sheet to be highlighted the country name. And if I select a couple of bars here, lines are highlighted, bars are highlighted, and in my other sheet, the bubbles and pie slices are being highlighted. And if I want to reset now, we know that in the first dashboard, we can just click anywhere and it will be reset. But if I try that in my second dashboard, I can click anywhere, but nothing happens. And why is that? That is because nothing is actually selected in the first place here, so we can't deselect. We have two options of what we can do to deselect. We can either go back to the first dashboard, click anywhere to deselect, and then return to our second one, or let's select something again, or we can add in another dashboard action in here, which is again a highlight action using these two sheets for the country name, hit OK, and then it will reset. But that's not super user friendly. So how can the new features help us here? 
since we're always using the same fields to highlight, you remember it was the country name, we can just use a set action for that. So let's go to, sorry, let's go to any sheet and let's create a set from the country name. And for that, I go to the country name, right click, create a set, give this a fancy name that tells me what I'm doing. In this case, country set should suffice. And I'll just choose any country to start with. Doesn't matter which one, I just want to get started. Hit OK. We can see I now have my country set and I can put this on color in order to highlight that one line that is in my set. I'm going to change the colors just for easier visibility. And if I want to have that line a little wider, I can do that as well by simply putting the country set on size. And important is to reverse the sizing in here so that I have many tiny lines. Let's make them a little bit tinier and one thicker line. And I can do the same thing in my bar chart as well. So go to my bar chart and I already have the country set. I don't need to create that one again. And I can put that on color. And if I scroll down, we can see that this one is now colored. I also want to have a recalculated reference line that stays put even if I deselect. And for that, I will need to create a calculated field. So I create a calculated field for that emissions of selected countries. And you will remember the syntax I told you earlier. So this is going to be if set, in my case, my country set, then I want my measure, that is emission, end. That's all that's happening here. Very simple calculation, and this will only give us the emissions if the country of that emission is in the country set. Hit OK, and we can put this measure on detail, go to analytics, enter a reference line for the whole table, and give that a fanciful color, but choose just the emissions of the selected countries. And we can see we now have a second reference line that matches exactly that country that we selected. And all that is left to do now is to add the actions in here. So I go to dashboard actions. I don't need either of these highlight actions anymore, so I can just remove them. And I want to change my set values. And I want that to originate from either sheet in here upon my selection. And I want to target my country set. Now, you see that we do not have to choose which target sheets we want to use because it simply targets all the sheets where this set is being used because it targets the set and not the sheets individually. And clearing the selection, I want to keep my set values because that is one of the main advantages we have over highlight actions. Mm -hmm. Give me just a second to see where I'm in my notes. Hit OK, and you can now see if I select a line, that bar gets colored. It works the other way around as well. I can select multiple, and even if I deselect, my reference line stays put, and that's the beauty of this here. Um, if I want to, let's say I select one line that is very at the bottom here, and I don't want to scroll through my 250 countries in order to find which one is actually in the set, I can simply put them to the very top of the bar chart by going into this sheet and putting country set on rows in front of countries. And I'll just hide the header here and all my selected countries will then be moved to the top. So I can use this to change my sorting as well. And you see that whichever countries I select here, they will be moved to the top of the chart. Now, my second dashboard should change as well. And for that, I simply reuse the set that I've created. So again, I put my country set on color for the bubbles, and we can see they are colored beautifully. And same goes for my donut chart. 
simply put the country set on color and please now it's time to take off the country names please don't ever don't ever create a donut chart or pie chart with 250 slices that's just please don't um, and one more thing I have in here, you can see that I have a lot of white space on this left hand side and that's because I reserved that space for a big S number. And I want to know now which percentage of the overall per, uh, emissions comes from the selected countries. And for that I need another calculated field and I give that exactly that name by selected countries, but let's actually go to the correct data source. That's important, use the data source that actually contains your country. Create the calculated field, give that a clever name. And now I want to have just the emissions of my selected countries. You remember that is the field we created just a few minutes ago. And I want to divide that by the overall emissions. Hit OK. Um, change the number format in here. Let's just make this a percentage and put that on, on label. Give it a few seconds. And there we go. And now I have this beautiful number in here and I need to implement my set action in this dashboard as well. Again, throw out the highlight action, we don't need that anymore. And add the change set values. And from my bubble chart, I want to be able to select and have that change the country set and again keep the set values. Hit OK, hit OK and if I select a couple of bubbles now we can see the big as number changes, the slice in my donut chart changes and in my first dashboard that changes as well. So whatever I do in either dashboard will automatically affect the other one as well and there's nothing more I need to do. So that was a very quick overview, very basic example. So let's take a look at what set actions can help us do. They do offer us an easy way of filtering, both including and excluding, which I didn't show, which filter actions cannot do, the excluding part. We can use sets to easily change the color, size, and shape of marks, and even the sorting, as I showed you with the bar chart. We can use them to change the scope of calculated fields and they will react to single and multi-select. There's just a bunch of things they cannot do, and they are not able to react to a measure at the moment. We cannot use multiple fields because a set is always sticking to one field, and that also means that they cannot span multiple data sources. So that is where parameters come into play. Tableau defines parameters as dynamic values that replace constant values in calculations, filters, and reference lines. Personally, I like to describe them as values floating around in space. They are completely rem removed from any data source until you reach from that data source to the parameter in order to use it. That means the parameter by itself is not worth really that much. You always need to reference it in a filter, calculation, or reference line. You can use them to do a bunch of things that would be difficult or even impossible to do with sets. You can use them to filter relative to a parameter. So let's say you want to filter on a six month span around a date value in a parameter or you want to color everything containing a string value in a parameter, which I will show you later on. You can use the same parameter with any field in any data source, which means you can use it across data sources. And of course, you can use them to set reference lines. So let's take a look at one very simple example here. This sheet or this dashboard contains three sheets from three different data sources. On the left-hand side, we have good old Superstore. On the right-hand side, you can see we have monthly Kickstarter pledges with one line per year. And we again have our average CO2 emissions per year. And I want to be able to highlight a focus year and show the year previous as well as a point of reference. And for that, I like to teach a simple acronym, which is CAUSE, create, apply, use, 
set up your action, and most importantly, enjoy. So let's start with that. If you want to use a parameter action, the first thing you need to do is create a parameter. We go to any sheet, and I want to have a year parameter, so I just create one, call this selected year, and let's make this a simple integer parameter. Doesn't really matter, I will allow all values because I trust my data source to have valid values in them. And let's just set a current value that actually shows us what we're doing. Now, again, the parameter by itself doesn't do anything. We need to apply it somewhere. And for that, I create a calculated field. And this will be my year. And I want to know the difference between my selected year. You will see parameters always show up as purple in calculated fields. And I want to know the difference between that and the year my Kickstarter was created at. And when the difference is zero, I want to show that this is the same year. When the difference is one, then I want this to say previous. And elsewise, this is just going to be other and end this. So again, not really a complicated calculation. This is just going to give me a new dimension, which I can put on color and use that to give this actually nice colors. Let's change these just for the moment. And I have prepared a color scale in here. And now you can see that our focus year is highlighted in this dark teal and the reference year in a light teal. And all the other lines show up in gray. And that looks really beautiful. And we can do the same thing in our CO2 emission data source. So again, create a calculated field, which we can use to reference the parameter. This is, what did I just do? I want to have a case. And I want to know the difference between the selected year minus year. And when this is zero, then I want this to be the same. When it's one, then it's previous. And else it's just other and end this. Again, same calculation, but in a different data source. So now we've applied it. You remember the A. Next comes U. We actually use it in a sheet. And again, you can see because this is another data source, we have to change the colors again. So this is a bit tedious. And just to make sure that we're using the same colors. And there we go. So now I have the same color code here, but I actually need to set up my action next. And for that, go to dashboard actions and create a change parameter action. Let's start with the Kickstarter pledges. Upon my selection of a year, I want to affect the selected year parameter. And that should come from the field of year of created at. I don't want to aggregate. I'm going to talk about that later. I just want this to be single selection. And let's just set up the second one as well for the CO2 emissions. Upon selection, I want to target the selected year parameter and feed it from the year again not aggregating anything. And if I select a line up here now, we can see that it changes down below. And if I select 2011, we can again see that it changes up here. But what about this superstore chart now? In here, I don't simply want two different uh, colors, two distinct colors. I want two different color legends. So I want my focus here to be colored in a teal color scale and the other three years colored in gray scale, depending on how high the value is. And I want to sort my subcategories depending on the sales in the focus year. For that, I actually need two calculated fields. So again, create a calculated field, call this one sales, and if my year of order date is the same as the selected year, then I want to have my sales. And that's basically it. I'm just going to copy this because it makes things easier. And for my second field, 
I want to reverse this. And I don't want everything that is in the selected year. I want everything that is not in the selected year. Hit OK. And now I can exchange my sales for this sales. And we can see that we now only get sales for 2011, but we need the other sales as well. So I'm just going to put the reverse sales to the same axis, get rid of measure names. And now I put my measure values on color. And for the moment, that gives us just one color scale, but we can right click and use separate legends. And now I can make my sales of the focus year a teal color and give all the other sales a gray scale. There we go. And I wanted to sort my subcategories by just the sales of that year. So let's choose the field here, which is PA sales, and we can see it's now sorted by the sales in 2011. And depending on which year I choose on the other side, again, this changes beautifully. A parameter can only ever take one value at a time. But as you saw, parameter actions give us the option of aggregating multiple values. So let's take a look at another very small example real quick. Let's say you want to check out all the clients that start with a certain initial or with multiple initials, if you choose such. I've created a small helper data source in order to create this little keyboard up here. Um, I've already set that up. And I now want to be able to use that keyboard to choose the initials of my customers. And for that, I have to start with the cause acronym again by creating a parameter Let's call this selected initials. And this is gonna be a string field. And yeah, we'll again, just allow all variables. And I'm now gonna give, create a calculated field to apply that correct, uh, that parameter and call that selected characters. And this is gonna say if, my parameter, selected initials, contains the first character of a client's name, then I want to have that character. Else I just want to have other, and that's the end of that. So pretty simple. Hit OK and put that on color. And you can see everything goes blue, and we're going to just change that real quick to a gray color and let's do the same for the customers as well. So this is again the superstore. We already have our selected initials parameter and I'm going to create a calculated field. Uh, selected customer initials and this again if my parameter contains the first letter of the customer's name then I want to have that first letter, else I just want to have other, and that's the end of it. Hit OK, again, put that on color, again, change that to a gray color, and then you can see we have a third sheet down here. Let's get rid of this color legend. This third sheet, I want you to be able to show all the, or the number of customers per initial. So I want to have my selected customer initials in rows, and also on color. And I actually want to exclude other because I don't care about them. I just want to know the selected customers. For the moment, it's empty and that's fine. We just need to set up our action. Again, a parameter action. This will only originate from the keyboard. And upon my selection, I want to fill the selected initials parameter from the character capitals. And I want to concatenate now. So if I select any kind of aggregation in this aggregation field, this will affect the way um, Tableau reacts to a multi-selection action. And I want to concatenate. Hit OK. And let's just select all of these for a moment. And we can now see everything gets colored. We can use this to change the color scale just to make sure that we actually um, 
have this fit in with a color scheme. Again, assign this doesn't really matter that they don't have that they don't all have different colors. It's just as an orientation. And if I select a couple of letters now, we can see that only those customers are being highlighted and we can see how many customers we have per initial. So again, just a very simple use case here. Let's end with a short overview of what parameter actions can and cannot do. They can take values from different fields. We can use them to aggregate values and we can use them to span multiple data sources. And of course, to set colors, labels, and reference lines. There's few things that they cannot do, and that is they cannot take more than one value. But as I just showed you, the concatenation feature helps you to kind of move around that uh, bit. But the most important question is probably, how can you decide when you use one over the other? And let's just go into full screen for this again. Now, depending on your number of data sources, if you have only one data source, you'll be fine with either action, but as soon as you have multiple, you do need to use the parameter action. The same goes for the number of origin fields that you want to use to feed your parameter. If you have only one field, again, either action is fine, but as soon as you have multiple, you do need to use the parameter action. Thinking about what kind of values you want to use to trigger that action. Um, if you have only discrete values, again, either action is fine, but as soon as you use continuous values, you do need to create a parameter action. Selection, so if you only want to single select, uh, so select only single values in order to trigger your action, either action is fine and you can use multi-value selection with either action as well, but they react differently. So multi-value selection for set actions will add all attributes to the set, while parameter actions first aggregate the values that you selected and then add that aggregation to the parameter. So you have to use the sum, minimum, maximum, average, or um, the concatenation as I just showed you. Styling wise, you can use either action to color or size your marks. Set actions might be a bit quicker if you only have in or out, while you always need a calculated field for parameter actions. Filtering, you can of course use either action to filter, but the beauty of set actions is that it helps you filter multiple values, while parameter actions give you the benefit of filtering relative to a value. And that's basically it. Blah, basically it. So you learned what we had before set and parameter actions, namely filter and highlight action. We talked about what sets and parameters are, how those actions change the way we can raise, what it is either of them can or cannot do. And we just talked about how to you decide when to use one over the other. Again, everything I showed you today is in my blog. And there's plenty of more resources I would urge you to check out. So these are all brilliant examples of set actions and parameter actions respectively. So they help you a lot more. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, I haven't had the freedom of mind to check the, uh, the Q&A function while talking, but we can now use the time to get to any questions you might have had. Sweet, thanks for that. Um, I think we had some some nice comments in the chat about the functionality and that it helps a lot doing like much more interactive things than were possible before. Um, in the Q and A, there was one question from Catherine. Um, it's a bit it's a bit technical. Um, so she basically asked for recommendations to use parameters for sheet swaps. Um, she actually goes into detail for a few more technical bits, um, so maybe we can we can answer them offline afterwards. Um, but sort of what what sort of recommendation would you have to use a parameter to to swap sheets on dashboards? Oh yeah, well the uh, you probably have already taken a look at the uh, um, instructions that you can find in the online help. 
Uh, what I've found with clients is the bit they always miss is using a layout container where you insert all of your sheets that you want to swap out. So that's very important. And uh, please note that uh, legends, if you have discrete uh, legends, they will vanish if you deselect a sheet. But using continuous legends, they will just t turn up showing null. So that can be messy and will probably not have the results that you were hoping for. But again, let's talk about that more individually. You can check that out. Cool. Um, Chris asks if you have a blog as well. Um, I think he didn't listen to you when you said your, your, your URL. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Just going to show the agenda. So my blog that Chris McClellan, thank you so much, helped me set up is queenofdata.net. So check that out for everything from serious posts on parameter actions to emotional rumblings about how COVID-19 affected my life. Cool. Um, and do you have any sort of um, any favorite use of, of set actions or parameter actions, something that you've seen somebody do online where you thought, whoa, that's, that's amazing? Um, no, there's, there's too many to choose just one. So again, um, just check out these examples. They are just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much you can do that I never thought was possible. So wrapping my mind around these things is sometimes, again, impossible. <laughs> um, but there's crazy stuff you can do with these. And it's, it's really beautiful. Cool. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, we, so Catherine, we'll, we'll go back to you and um, sort of try to figure out your problem. Um, thanks, Heidi, uh, again, for getting up early and for presenting. Um, so that pretty much concludes our um, event for today. Um, as usual, um, if you are a member of the Auckland Talk, um, we have giveaways for all our speakers. Um, so we do um, that today as well. Um, first off, Steve. Um, well, I thought about giving him a, a Make of a Monday book, but considering that his chart is already in the book, you can see it here, he mentioned, that's that one, he mentioned it earlier. Um, I would assume he has one of those in his bookshelf already anyway. Um, so instead, I have a big book of dashboards um, that will go down to Dunedin. I hope you don't have that one yet. No, thank you very much. That's awesome. Very very good. Um, then we have a How Charts Live for um, Sarah. Um, I don't know if she's still online. Um, we'll get that to Singapore somehow. Um, we'll figure that out as well. And then lastly for Heidi, because she actually made her way to New Zealand but wasn't able to present, um, there is this beautiful We Are Here. Now if you're not in New Zealand, you might have no clue what that is about. If you are in New Zealand and have something to do with data visualization, you probably know all about it. Um, it's, an, it's an atlas of, um, of New Zealand and there are pages of pages of visualizations about New Zealand, about all sorts of data. Um, so that will go your way to Germany as well, um, as soon as we are able to organize that logistically. Um, yeah, thanks again to all the speakers. Uh, thanks for everybody dialing in internationally. Um, we do have a couple of more announcements that um, Jeff will do, um, but that's it from me. Um, and I hand it over to you, Jeff. Thanks, Alex. And um, yeah, to, to all the speakers, uh, a great job and, and hopefully uh, a little bit of something for everyone in there. Um, at your, your different levels and wherever you are uh, with Tableau so far. Um, we, we also had a, a few other, just I, I guess throughout the chat rather than the Q&A, um, you know, some clarifications along the way around which version does this require, that sort of thing. Um, I can send a link that really nicely, it's, a, it's on the Tableau website, it really nicely summarizes uh, the, the releases and what's contained within, within each release. And so you can go back through and see when, you know, parameter actions were released and, and that sort of thing. Um, would also recommend if you're after more hands-on or specific advice around uh, your situation in terms of version upgrades or you know um, stuck on a certain workbook that sort of thing um, if you're in New Zealand uh, you should have a Tableau partner either Montage or Fern so um, make sure you contact that partner to um, yeah go through your your details and more specifically and, and maybe some advice around server upgrades that sort of thing 
Um, Tableau have plenty of good documentation as well, obviously. So, um, you know, we can help you with, with some of those links too. Um, can someone just confirm you can see my screen with uh, 2020.2 coming soon? Yep, all good. Yep, cool. Um, so this is just a note to say that um, there was a question about 2020.2 and that is coming soon. Uh, coming soon, I'm going to estimate within the next couple of weeks, given that we've, we've, we've already received some notifications around Tableau Online being upgraded to 2020.2, uh, bit of a mouthful. Uh, but you can see here, um, we are running a webinar next week. So Chip, who is one of the uh, technical gurus of Tableau within New Zealand, um, is going to be deep diving on the Tableau's new data modeling. So it really um, is probably, is definitely the, the biggest um, feature within this 2020.2 release. And, and it um, fundamentally changes a lot of the data modeling, uh, data connectivity, data joins, um, type elements, uh, I guess, mostly in that, um, you know, pre-analysis space, obviously, as, as, as is connected to your, your data set. So um, that'll be next week, next uh, Thursday, uh, New Zealand time. This is all New Zealand time, but we'll include a link to that uh, once we've got a registration page up. And uh, that should be a, a highly valuable session for those who want to learn more about what's coming there. Uh, oh, yes, thanks to Callum. Uh, just a link in the chat around... Um, Burns link, so uh, I can also add the montage link in there as well, and that those are the two New Zealand Tableau partners. Um, Q and A, we've, we've gone through, we've, we've got a couple left, but I think we, we want to close at six uh, to allow people to uh, get to their dinners and their families and things. So we'll um, just take anything that's left uh, and answer those. Oh, sorry, Chip. Wednesday the thirteenth. Next Wednesday the thirteenth. I will make that more clear in the. Uh, in the, uh, in the link that we send out. Apologies and thanks for the correction there. Um, and just lastly to close, uh, in addition to thanking the speakers, um, is that we've got the, uh, a LinkedIn group for New Zealand Tableau users. So that's one of the primary uh, channels that we use to communicate things like Tableau user groups, um, new features as we see them, uh, things like the webinar that we're running next Wednesday around um, the, data the new data modeling, um, things like the free e-learning offer, you know, we, we post that all in there. So it's a, a very a highly recommended channel to, to stay across uh, news as it sort of gets released. Uh, and then lastly, just to, to circle back to finish the session is to um, thank uh, Tabata and Alex for co-organizing this, co-hosting this, uh, as well as the speakers. And also just a reminder about that giveaway, head over to the e-learning page, sign up, complete at least one of the badges, uh, send that through to us, and um, we've got a few more books uh, to give away as part of that. And um, yeah, we really, really want you guys um, to, to start down that path and uh, just sort of show some, some of your learning and, and uh, yeah, hopefully win a good book in the meantime. So that's it from me. Uh, I don't know if we've got anything else from anyone else. Um, if not, we'll, we'll close it there. Thanks for all attending. We had really good attendance, really happy with that. Um, you know, over 100 consistently throughout the session. So, um, yeah, good turnout. I think we're waving goodbye, are we? Is that, is that a, yep. is, you want to say something or is that a goodbye? That's a goodbye. Thanks, okay. everybody, to join. Thanks for dialing in. See you next time. Cheers, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Catch you later.